Today we're going to be doing an install in a 2014 Acura MDX. First thing we're going to have to do is get behind the radio here. So we're going to be popping off this trim piece here. That has retention clips along the sides all the way around and then on the inside here too. Um, it's easiest to start down here. You don't really want to pry against the radio because you might mark it. And you don't want to pry against this material because it's kind of rubbery. Uh, you can leave an imprint from your pry tool. So starting down here on like a corner's best. And you just kind of want to pry around until it starts coming loose. Once you get the bottom loose, you can use your pry tool up here, but just make sure you have everything else loose so you aren't putting too much pressure. And mainly you want to be pulling it out instead of prying against. Um, once we get that out, there's going to be one plug here. We'll do that. And then you can see the clips here. We've got two on each bottom side here, two in the middle, and then two up top. So now that we've got that out, we got to take out these Phillips head screwdrivers here, or Phillips head screws here. After you've got that loose, there's going to be two 8 millimeters that are on the bottom. They're about level with the bottom of the radio here, just straight back. Um, you can use a wrench or you can use a 90 degree bit like this. So we're just going to take those out real quick. Alright, as you can see. That's what they look like. Uh, they do have a little bit of like Loctite on them, so they are a little difficult to get out. Uh, so sometimes a drill might not be the best and using a wrench would be better. Now that we've got that loose, we can go ahead and pull the radio out. You might have to use your pry tool for this in some spots. We're just gonna pull. And once you've got it out a little bit, the um, light up here, you'll unplug it for the hazards. And we've got one down here for the AC controls as well. And now that we've got those loose, we've got the radio out here. And we'll go ahead and show you the V-line connections next. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and put our cables in now. And we've got a towel down here so we can kind of set down the radio without really scratching anything up. And you're going to want to start by unplugging the cables that are keeping it from coming out that are a little too short. Um, so we'll start with these two here. And now that we've got those loose, the radio will sit down easier. Uh, we're going to start with our first cable. It's going to be our WL Toy USB. And so we're going to plug that in right here. And the factory one's going to stay disconnected. We're going to be using a retention harness in this kit, so we'll show you that in a little bit and explain how that works. Uh, next, we're going to be doing our video cable, which was the other plug that we undid. And that one is called the CVHON3D. And so we've got both of our ends here. Unlike the last cable that we did, we're going to be plugging the factory one back in, but it's going to be plugged into the female side of our T-harness here. Plug that in there. Plug that in there. And the last one we'll have to do is going to be our harness. It's going to be our main power harness. And that is going to go right here. And just like the video harness, we're going to plug the factory side into the female side of the harness here. And the last one is going to be this one right here. It should be directly down here in the corner. You might kind of have to route the cables a little weird to get down into the corner in some cases. But it will reach. So we got that in place, we'll plug the factory one back in. So in this case, it's a good example, we accidentally bent a pin whenever we were putting the connector in. It wouldn't go into place, so instead of just pushing and pushing, I wanted to look inside to see if it got bent or anything, which it did. So we're going to bend that back up. I've got a pry tool here. Um, you can use a screwdriver, tweezers, 
you know, whatever you have laying around, even your car keys if you need to. And once you get that straightened out, it should connect a lot better. I'm just gonna pull this around so we have more room. There we go. And now I've actually made the connection and the bent pin isn't bent anymore. Now that we've got that done, we're gonna go ahead and tag our reverse wire. It's one of the last steps here. Uh, you'll find the instruction guide in your kit. Uh, we're gonna be showing you here. So the rev wire right here, it's gonna be coming off the main harness that we just did. You're gonna be stripping the end of it, probably say like a quarter of an inch. And then there should be a P-tap in your kit. And we'll show you that in just a second. So this is the P-tap here. You're gonna be unscrewing the top part and the bottom part, but we'll do the top first. Unscrew it fully and stick the wire through. After that, kind of like to bend it just a little bit so it doesn't come loose. And then you're gonna stuff the wire in there and tighten it. When you tighten it, you should feel it's really hard to tighten at the very end. And if you pull on it, uh, we've got a little bit exposed here, so we're actually gonna fix that. You don't want any wire exposed. You want it to all be just the purple shielding sticking out. There we go. So it's snug in there. It's making a good connection and we don't have any wire exposed. Now we'll undo this side. And then we need to find our 24 pin plug back here. And we're looking for pin slot number 24. Should be this one. We're gonna count it out. This is our 12 pin here. Or sorry, 12, 24. 12 on top and bottom. And we're looking for pin slot number 24, which will actually be labeled on them. Um, if you look, it'll be in the corners. We might not be able to catch it on camera because they are really small, but you'll see in the corners they're actually labeled. Um, and it's gonna be this wire, this brown one here in the corner. Since we don't have a lot of slack right here, we're actually gonna just take a little bit of that tape off just because we don't want to hurt anything. So we pulled that back a little bit just because we don't want to tag too close to the plug here. In case the wire was damaged in any way, you don't want to damage a wire right next to the end of the plug. Makes it extremely difficult to fix. Um, so as you can see, we kind of put the slot around the wire there. And then on this side here, there's the pin that sticks into the actual shielding of that wire. And that'll give you that connection. So tighten that down. I just want to give it a tug, kind of wiggle it around. It's making a really good connection. So we're going to plug this back in. All right. And then after that, you'll want to test that wire. Um, we don't have to do it right away, but I would do it before reassembling everything. Um, so we'll get right back to that. All right, so we're gonna be going over our retention harness here. It's gonna work for certain Toyotas and Honda Acura vehicles. Um, this is the factory USB plug here. So this typically goes into the back of the radio uh, and it runs to the center console, glove box, um, dash uh, for the factory USB that goes to the radio. Now in this case, we're actually using that port for this radio for our iPod emulation. So this retention harness will make it work for the V-Line. All you have to do is plug it in and you've got a male USB on this side, USB-A. You can plug this into the V-Line or you can use the uh, provided extension that we send with the V-Line kit and you can plug that in and run this to the V-Line. And so that way, whenever you're using the factory USB, it'll be connected to the V-Line. Um, in some cases, CarPlay or Android Auto might not work that well. Depends on the length of the run. If you use an extension like this, it might give some varied results, especially since we're going from the factory USB in the center console, running that all the way to behind the radio, and then we're extending it even further and going to the V-Line. It can cause some issues with those, um, but very rarely. All right, so we've got everything installed now. Uh, we went ahead and did the retention cable. Last thing we're gonna do before we put everything back together uh, and route the cables is test the reverse wire. I wanna make sure we test it uh, just in case something were wrong. You don't wanna run all your cables somewhere that they, you know, somewhere nice, organize them all, and your reverse isn't hooked up properly. So we're just gonna slide the radio back in and lift the cables over the top since we're not doing, you know, the run now. We're just gonna test. Um, next, we're gonna take our multimeter here 
we're going to set that to DC voltage. You'll see uh, AC has the you know squiggly line, um, and then we've got DC right here with the dotted or dashed and the solid line. From there, I'm going to take our 20 pin connector here, and you're going to take your red lead and put that on purple. So as you can see, purple wire is in this pin right here, and we've stuck our probe in there. Next, we're going to take the black lead and put that on ground, which is the black wire. It's not in the far corner, but it's one over from the corner. So we'll do that. And you can set that to the side. Um, and as you can see on the multimeter here, it's reading a little bit of voltage, but nothing, you know, obviously substantial. And when we go in reverse, we should see that jump from 0 to 12. It should be 0 in every other gear except reverse. So that to the side. We're going to turn the ignition on just so we can shift. And I'll show you on the multimeter here. I'll pull this out of the way. So reverse. 12 volts. Or it'll range. I mean our engine's off right now. We don't have anything on the battery charger right now. So we're at 11 volts. Uh, if the car were running you'd see that be around 14, maybe 15. Um, but as long as you're above around 10 to 15 you should be good. And then when we go back into park you see it drops back down to zero. We go back to reverse, 11, if we go to neutral, 0, drive, 0, and so on. And then reverse again, 11. So we do know that the V-line is getting reverse, and we can continue with the install. Alright, so I wanted to show you all during the install how we ran the cables. Um, so for this vehicle, it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, a lot of other vehicles, we can typically just run through behind the dash here and go straight to the glove box. Um, this one, they have a shell that's around the actual glove box that makes it a little bit more difficult to get to. Uh, we just took some wire here, this uh, 14 gauge wire. Um, it's a little bit kind of stiff, so you can kind of push it back behind somewhere. Um, we shined our flashlight through the hole here, and then we look through right here to see the light. From there, you can tell where you need to run the wire to, um, and then we got it like this. So the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to attach our wires uh, for the V-line to the actual 14 gauge that just ran through here. And then we'll pull them through from this side once we have them attached over here. And that'll be how we route them over there. So we'll cut to that. Alright, so we've got everything taped up here. Uh, we have the blue wire that's ran through. We also have a green wire here. Uh, we're going to run everything through one at a time. These plugs can be a little big. So if you try to run multiple plugs through at the same time, they can get caught behind the dash and it's really hard to get them back out. So instead we're going to run the blue wire through, we're going to disconnect it once it's all the way through, and then we'll have the green wire that's halfway ran, and we can keep doing that. Uh, this is the 20 pin connector here, as you can see we've taped it up with electrical tape, and we've kind of put it sideways so that way it won't get caught on anything. So from here, we're just going to pull it through. And you want to try to pull from right here. If you pull from the very end, it's going to give it a weird kind of angle as you're pulling on it. So you want to pull as close to the tip as you can. And it's best to kind of fish it back and forth until you can really find a spot that it goes through because it will be tight at certain spots. Um, as you can see, we've got the other side here, so that means we're getting close. And there we go. We got that through. We can go ahead and undo all of our tape here, and then we'll continue to do that. And then we'll come back once we've got all of our wires ran. All right, so we've got everything ran in here. We're just doing a test fit right now. Um, this is the cover, not the actual uh, air filter, you know, lid itself, but this is just the cover to access it. We've notched a little hole in here, um, and so that way all of our wires will be able to stay exactly where they're at. Can see we'll pop it in there make sure all of our wires are in that slot and it locks in place and then from there we're going to use some uh, adhesive some double side velcro and put it right up here and then we'll come back once we're done with that all right so we've got the v-line wires ran we've tested everything we're ready for reassembly we're going to be putting the radio back in first you want to make sure you have the hazard switch plug out so it doesn't get caught behind the radio and then you're going to slide it back in pop that in right up here and you want to get the two clips in up here like that and the bottom should line up here after that we're going to go through and put all four screws back in and 
All right, and now that we've got all those in, we can go ahead and put our trim back in. Make sure you plug in this plug back in behind the AC here. You can also do that before you put the radio back in, but it's just right here, there's nothing in the way. And lastly, we're gonna be putting this back in and just plug it in here. So make sure your air vents go in first. And I just kind of slightly push around the edges, wait for all the clips to go in, and just make sure nothing's off, and we're all good there. All right, so now we're gonna be mounting the V-line. Uh, we've closed this here, and we've got our wires through here, and we're actually gonna pull it down just a little bit to mount it. So we're gonna put it right here, because there's actually a shelf that goes in this glove box, so we wanna make sure we avoid it. And then from here, Push these wires back up in here. And we're gonna want it about like that. So one up the bottom. just to give it a cleaner look and that should be good we're gonna go ahead and get our shelf in there just to do a quick test fit there we go and that's how I mounted the V-line 